Welcome back to what could potentially be the final episode of Mad World, playing as the House of the Elephant Dynasty. Don't worry, the Mad World series is not going anywhere. We're still going to play in this crazy world that we've built. We're going to move over and play as a different character to keep things fresh, to keep things interesting. We had a goal for this series and we've basically done it at this stage, but we still have a few more things left to do. So number one, as I said before, we want to completely have this capital fully upgraded. The ultimate place for the ultimate god. Rhino the Third, and the big goal for the series was obviously to have a wolf god with his own empire, his own pantheon, his own sort of house. We've done it, you know. We've got gods and gods in our family tree right now. Oh my god, he got shrewd, haughty, idolizer, willful. Not great, but he is going to come out hopefully pretty well. Let's educate him in magic. Let's continue educating him in magic, I should say. Um, this is going to be our next and probably first decent god character on the throne. We're going to get him on the throne. We're going to keep the realm stable. We're going to Upgrade, obviously, the capital. And finally, we're going to craft that really good sort of family heirloom sword. We have Mjolnir, but it's, you know, that that's sort of something that, that was Odin's and Thor's. We want something of our own. You know, we want a rhino weapon. <laughs> Which sounds a bit weird now that I say it out loud. But we want ourselves a, a rhino weapon. Something like Mjolnir. Something the equivalent power to pass down to our, uh, to our ancestors. To designate our heir, essentially. And rhino is... Slowly mastering the art of swordsmanship. Good for you, Rhino. I didn't even think we have any... Oh, we've got level one of novice fighters. Sure. Can we take this guy as a squire? We can, can't we? Is, am I thinking of the right society? Name a squire. Yeah, minor title. Let's do that then. Um, well, court position for a start. Uh, Bokvaj, you'll do with your 43 learning. Uh, trade master, she'll do. Where is it? Squire? Um, squire, there we go. Let's name our son Rhino. Who, in turn, will be trained in, uh, you know all things swordsmanship i assume so that will actually give him the same trait that we have here so squire gives you martial in exchange for intrigue diplomacy stewardship learning obviously fertility it's quite well balanced now that i look at it though the minus 10 percent tax modifier might not be ideal do we want to do that do we want to focus entirely on magic for our obviously our our heir and soon to be the next emperor oh god he got zealous as well when did he get that you know what i don't think i want to name him as squire I think we probably want to name our second son, Prince Owo What's This, our squire. So that he can be sort of the uh, the marshal of the realm, if you want to look at it like that. And we'll keep this kid to be the, the ruler, the destined ruler. He's coming out really well, though. So hopefully we'll see how he progresses on through this episode. And he should come of age this episode as well. What do we want to do? We want to hire a smith when we can. I think we've done it recently. Or at least we crafted armor last time, didn't we? So when the options come available, we're, we'll craft ourselves the best weapon that we can. You know, the the... Uh, the elephant sort of family heirloom. Under 50 years of the Lycan Empire, the Kingdom of Venice is now considered de jure part of it. That's incredible. So, Venice is obviously where our father, Thuka Rhino, lives. His, his capital, his holdings. And that's where he is also the head of the religion. The, the first sort of um, demigod, but he is immortal because of the Philosopher's Stone. He's a very, very powerful mage, essentially. Um, and he was the first to marry a god, wasn't he, in our family tree? Yeah. Nana Aesir. Or at least he was the first to... What did he do that was, was relevant? Oh, he reformed the faith. Of course, he's the Filker. Yeah. So, he's a very, very important character. I think he's going to be around for ages. And I would kind of like this character to be around for ages as well. But maybe not in the same sort of degree that he is. We'll abdicate when our son is of age and ready to take over from us. So that, you know, this character can go and forge his own destiny as the inbred lunatic that he is. We want to play as this pure, sort of righteous, powerful god instead, you know? Alright, what can we do then? Compose a book. How much is that going to cost us? 1,002 gold. We're writing it with gold leaf. Sure, let's do it. Why not? Couldn't hurt, could it? In honor of Odin. Yeah, we'll write a book in honor of Odin. Odin, of course, died very, very early into the series. So this is sort of like a memoir more than anything else. A sort of a, um, a sort of posthumous memorial, I guess. Can we search for a smith? Yes, we can. As I've gotten more experienced in magic, I've begun to experiment controlling the weather. I think I could use this to improve the crop growth in the surrounding area. Um, this sounds like a bad idea. I'll get the most from my capital, Arcasius. Uh, gain bountiful harvest, giving local tax multiplier plus 7.5%, and the prosperity increases. Sure, let's do that. And we gain the trait, chased. That seems a bit odd, but okay. Too much work to be done? Why not? Well, I mean, we've got three kids anyway, three pure-blooded gods, so I mean, that can't hurt, can it? Um, these are ridiculous. These characters are so odd seeing, uh, firstly, a child with the crowds in focus. Uh, secondly, these just incredibly overpowered traits. 
All right, let's go ahead and search for a smith now that we can actually do it. And we've got a decent amount of gold. Do I need to pop that loan first? No, we don't. We've done it. Okay, then. Search for a smith. Let's forge our artifact. Yeah. What do we want to make? I mean, a sword is cool. That gives prestige. The mace is... Sort of seems a bit more appropriate for a, a werewolf dynasty. It seems a bit more of a vicious weapon. What about a lance? Because what, what, what's our sort of army composition? Let's take a general look here. We barely have any cavalry at all, actually. Mostly light infantry. Decent amount of heavy infantry. A lot of special units. Those would be like and berserkers, you know. Um, sword, lance, axe. An axe seems the most appropriate for, you know, sort of a Norse werewolf style uh, character. Yeah, let's go with the axe. Light foot troops as well. That's the majority of our army. Seems the most appropriate one. It's a shame we can't custom name artifacts best, but that's coming in uh, Holy Fury. We're not going to battle about anything but the very best. 2,000 gold. How close are we to be able to finish off our capital? Because that's our final goal besides get a good air. We can get next level of barracks at least. Um, a house died. It doesn't really matter, I guess, unless it's a subscriber house. Why do you not like me? What's wrong with you? Um, attraction to inbred, minus 30. Legis inbred, minus 10. Attraction to lunatic, minus 10. Legis inbred, or Legis lunatic, minus 10. You know what? Just have some gold. Shut up. Okay. Let's go ahead and have you oversee construction. Seeing as all we've got left to spend money on now is just the construction. Swordmaster Guild, that'll do. Go for it. Sweet. Oh, what is this? Imperial bodyguards. Prince Bacunsis of the Lycan Empire has proven his loyalty and determination to be the best of them. He stopped a would-be assassin from entering the palace grounds. That's awesome. And that's for five years as well. Plot discovery chance plus 10%. Plot power defense plus 50%. That's a lot. Thank you. I mean, I might have to kill you off because you're in line to the throne, but that's really good. Horse Guild, done. What do we need now? Imperial Palace. Werewolf Soldiers level 4 we can get. Is that the last level of that? It is. Holy shit. And then a tech points, isn't it? In improved keeps level 8 and castle infrastructure level 8, I think is what we need. Uh... Cavalry level 8 there. Light infantry level 7. Yeah, improved keeps level 8 as well is pretty important. Can we get any of these? Uh, improved keeps level 8. We've done it. Cavalry level 7. We've done it. You know what? We actually might achieve this episode, and I didn't think we would. I was sent to Restro Bothnia to deal with the rebellious rabble. Thank you. You're, they should trouble you far less. I appreciate that. Castle Wars, level 5. Seeing how much gold we have, I kind of like a much higher fort level, but there's not a lot we can do about that, unfortunately. Oh, God, we need another 1,000 gold for our sword. That's a real shame. Oh, sorry, for our axe, obviously. What else can we invest in here? Um, maybe Majesty? I mean, none of them seem pretty useful at this stage. Do any of them uh, affect our buildings? Light Infantry, Light Infantry, Cavalry, Castle Infrastructure... Castle infrastructure, castle infrastructure, that's it. So actually we can invest in any of these without having to worry about the repercussions on our uh, on our buildings. So I'm just going to go with popular customs to increase city vassal opinion that little tiny bit more. Seeing as religious customs we can always, or sorry, religious opinion we can increase just by donating to a holy order, something like that. So that's not a big deal. Could do with some gold though. Uh, why don't we stop our retinues reinforcing quite as fast? Saying that, I imagine they're already at the top, aren't they? Yeah, they're already at full strength. I don't know why we keep getting fleets. As Rhino grows older, I feel like I should do everything in my power to aid his growth. What do we want to give to lovely young Rhino? Financial skill. He gains temperance and one stewardship. Uh, magical knowledge. Erudite and one learning. Brawny for free. Just free brawny. That seems pretty good. Although saying that, I'm thinking that's good because of the health bonus. Erudite you can get from, you know, being part of the Hermetic Society, things like that. I'm going to give him brawny just because that's probably the hardest out of all those traits to get. Um, he gains zero, we lose zero health, he gains the same amount of health, so he doesn't actually gain anything out of that, just brawny. That's fine by me though, that is vassal opinion plus five, attraction opinion as well. Holy shit. This axe will be known as the dragon cleaver. This axe shall be known as heaven's devastator or dark bringer. I think heaven's devastator is the most appropriate, seeing as A, we're gods, B, we've killed gods, and C, we reformed an entire faith. Done. Heaven's Devastator. That is awesome. Much better than Mjolnir. Let's take a look at that. Uh, whoa. Martial plus two. Personal combat skill plus seven. A legendary axe rumored to have been wielded by Odin's messengers. Mjolnir gives personal combat plus one. Martial plus three. Plus same religious opinion plus five. You know what? It's debatable which one is better. I actually really, really like this. So light troops plus 20%. 
Seeing as we already have... How many light troops is that? 15,000? An additional 20% is like... That's the equivalent of essentially having 3,000 more light infantry. Assuming they're all on the center and we were leading that as well. That's really good. It seems appropriate then to give all of the artifacts we haven't got equipped. That Rhino can equip to, you know, Rhino the fourth here. So that he starts building up his prestige, vassal opinions, things like that, you know. Um, just, just sort of generally helping out where we can. Uh, as for a weapon for my young son, why don't we give him, uh, Mjolnir, the legendary hammer of Thor. <laughs> Let's go carousing as well, seeing as we haven't got much else to do here. Um, this tribe is really getting on my nerves. Can we just rip it down? No, we need gold for that. And unfortunately, I haven't got any gold to do that. Do we still have to pay off a loan? No, you know what, to be honest, I'm quite happy just to not take out a loan and let it tick up at this stage. Oh, rent needs back to the capital there. Um, what are we doing? Yeah, giving Rhino plenty of gifts. You can have... Thor's hammer there. Uh, what else have we got that really can have uh, any sort of old ceremonial stuff that we're not using? Obsidian X is a ceremonial weapon to my knowledge, so we can definitely have that one. We don't have like a spare... Oh, we gave him the spare crown. We don't have any spare like um, robes, I guess. We give him some of our Chinese robes, seeing how much we've got. We give him the ceremonial robes, and we can instead equip... Oh, you can have robes and armor. Right. Um, in that case, I'll give him the Intrigue robes. Why not? I mean, it's the most monthly prestige. That's what we're looking to build up for him at this stage. Although he's getting plus 15 a month. That's probably more than the current Emperor of the HRE. We're getting the trait stressed. No matter how much I try, I just can't wrap my head around any of this. Why does magic have to be so hard? Well, if you weren't such an idiot, this wouldn't be a problem. What's the HRE actually getting out of interest? Oh, 83 a month. Ignore me completely. That's a huge amount. Why is he getting so much? That's a ridiculous amount of prestige per month. Um... Oh, because he holds a shit ton of land to himself. I see. Gem shipment as well. He's part of the trade guild. I see. I was thinking, what do we want to do with this character? Because we want to abdicate and not preferably play as the inbred lunatic anymore to give ourselves the most stable, powerful, awesome round we can get. Why don't we kill off the current war chief and ascend to becoming the war chief of the Braidralag? That seems appropriate. Now, what we could do is go one step further. Vassalize the Braidralag and actually grant it to this character. I, I don't know how this would work if we kill him off and just become... War I, I, I guess another character would spawn here instead. Even though it says we're in line, I don't think we can actually take over as War Chief because we're not head of the uh, Religious Order, right? Unless we just gain the title in addition to everything else. I'm not sure. Even so, that'd be really cool having our previous character sort of the head of the religious military. Then we've got our grandfather head of the sort of religious government. And then another character as the head of the actual, you know, empire itself. Oh, whoa, well, what's this? Has improved as a squire. Excellent. Just what I wanted to see. He's now a page. So, as I said before last episode, we, we, we've got one kid training to be a squire. Um, although, not training to do anything, so I forgot to give him a guardian. Uh, let's go ahead and educate him ourselves then. So, we've got one kid. Prince Owo, what's this? Obviously, becoming our squire. Sort of our military guy. We'll probably make him our marshal. Something like that. And then, of course, we've got Rhino. Destined for governance and that type of thing. He's coming out really well. You know, shrewd, brawny, zealous. Willful, can turn into ambitious or brave. Haughty is terrible. Um, chance of running, showing ambition. Please. Ambitious. Boom. Oh my god, it worked. This character is turning out so well. And that got rid of Haughty too. So really from this, if we can get brave as well, this character becomes the best character ever. Uh, no congenital traits, but you know what? Pretty good either way. Be thorough, make others count on you. Gain the trait. 77% chance of him gaining diligent. 15% chance of gaining deceitful. Make room at the right time. 70 cent chance of getting patient. Well, obviously, you want to give him diligent. And again, deceitful. You know what? That's fine. I would have preferred diligent. He got chase. That's a bit of an odd one. Won't worry about it too much. Come on. Oh, right. Because we're his guardian and we have chase. So, of course, we're going to pass that down to him. Really, really hoping he gets... Uh, really hoping he gets brave here. Because that would really just be the, the sort of cherry on the cake, you know? What can we do? What are our important decisions? Cast aura. Right. We want to do that and aura of presence just to make people... Uh, sorry. Wait, what? Yeah, no, it was Aura of Presence. I'm reading that wrong. We'll get rid of this. We'll get rid of this one because we are really bad at magic and I don't want to risk it. We can't search for a smith anymore, so that thing's solved. What about technology? Castle infrastructure level 7. Um, we need light infantry level 7 as well, don't we? That might almost be everything. Castle infrastructure level 8 and cavalry level 8. Then we're actually done. Keep level 6. We've got so many troops from our capital now. This is ridiculous. Well, we don't really have to worry about any... Uh, 
any rebellions or anything like that. Rhea is pregnant, Zeus's mother, and our wife. And of course, our next character is also Zeus's brother. Something I really forget to mention. Um, seeing as that I think is pretty relevant, all things considered. Ah. Uh, so. Is so it going to allow stewards into the order? Sure, why not? I don't mind with that. Uh, so, holy orders allow, have different sort of, or at least part of this mod I've noticed is, um, they allow different people to join. Normally, it's if you've got, say, the, the combat focus, or, um, or you were trained in a martial education. But in certain circumstances, they can force a vote to allow different members to join. One thing I have noticed, though, is the societies are pretty barren in terms of the amount of people that actually join it. Like, I don't know whether they've all joined the Yums Vikings instead. Even then, it's still pretty barren. What about the trade league? Yeah, so for some reason, everybody loves this society the most. Not much of a surprise, really. Um, give her funds? Absolutely not. But yeah, I've noticed that the, the sort of bridge log and the Yom's Vikings don't really seem to get many people involved. I'm not sure whether it's because of the restrictive joining conditions um, or whether or not it's because of all these mods sort of uh, messing with each other a little bit. And another son? What does he turn out like? Uh, low fertility and sickly again. Unfortunately, not great, but we'll keep going for the magic, just because eventually we might get a really, really good mage, even if we're not going to play as the mage, because obviously, you know, we've got to play as Rhino here, it's tradition. Um, has he got anything new since we last checked? Not that I can see. Um, no funds for you. 15, though. One more year. Actually, only a few more months. We might as well stay and just uh, keep an eye on this, see how he turns out, because that will turn into something when he finishes his education. Please, for the love of God, come out well. This We haven't had good education on characters for quite some time now. Um, mainly because educating magic seems a little bit bugged. Because not only do they get the magic education, but they also get something else alongside it. So, the character we're playing as now is like a novice mage. And also a novice um, martial education. I forget what it's called now. What, like incompetent commander or something like that? Oh no, wait, he's Midas Touch, isn't he? He's a character before that. Yeah, this character was Midas Touch, but he started out an indulgent waste where we actually had to get to that stage. Bureau of Decadence increased by one. Another reason why we need a really good character is so we can fix that before it gets out of hand. Tech advances. That is what I like to see. But first, we're going to keep an eye on this. 10.2. That means it actually starts affecting the way the realm is run. So, lower taxes, lower levy size, lower uh, morale of armies as well. We need Rhino to come out well so we can fix the mistakes of this inbred lunatic, Rhino. Oh my god. One more month. Come on. Now, why don't we have a look at this, just while we wait here. Um, that's a holding slot to our capital. Did we not already have six? Oh, shit. It's 4,000. It's 5,000 gold. Sold. Absolutely sold. Um, I feel like I need to stop spending money at this point, then. Um, what else can we do? Let's have you collect taxes instead of overseeing construction. What do we want to invest in? What do we want? Um, probably religious customs are more important than majesty. Majesty is ticking up anyway, so you can go with religious customs just to sort of keep it equal there. Almost maxed out tech. I can't believe that we've done it. Well, I always say this, but then when I consider the amount of ridiculous learning we've got, you know, it's based on your learning stat, and every character has had really, really good learning. So it's not much of a surprise, besides Ugo, obviously, but Ugo was our first boy. Um, yeah, back to this education before I forget. A few more days, one more week. Oh my god, he's done it. You madman. Excellent. I failed him. You did not fail him, my friend. Look at this boy. Now, proud or stubborn? I think we'll take proud. Or at least hope we get proud. He got stubborn because he's a shit. Wow, look at this guy. And he came out a werewolf by birth. He is the character we've always wanted. Arcane Master, prestigious bloodline, shrewd. Novice fighter, not bad, but we can train him up later on with the societies. Brawny, obviously incredible. Uh, he's got his artifacts set up. A werewolf by birth, a god, a zealous one at that, ambitious, deceitful, chaste. Stubborn is the only bad trait. Even then, it's not that bad, you know? We need to abdicate. But we're a lunatic, so I don't think we can. I don't think lunatics ever abdicate. We need to get ourselves killed. Uh, that's, that's basically what we're looking to do here. There is a way to do that, but it requires the Hermetic Society. How are we going to play as young Rhino, then? Because we're never going to die, because we're a god. Um... Leave this with me. I'm going to have to think of how we do this now. I can't believe how good this sun came out, though. Holy shit. Honorary title. Hunting pack. Absolutely. Well, that's arrangement of marriage as well. Preferably between him and another god. We need to find one that's not inbred. So let's go ahead and reset. What are the god pantheons are? There's the Norse gods. There's the Egyptian gods. And I think, honestly, that's it. Oh, sorry. The, the Greek gods. I don't think there are Egyptian gods. 
Uh, we're looking for unmarried women within Diplo range. Let's take a look then. Um, the the issue is whether we go into the Greek pantheon or the Norse pantheon at this stage, they're going to come out inbred. I feel like a distantly, distantly related uh, Norse character might be the best one. Seeing as... Yeah, see, this character, see, even Athena is the granddaughter of our current wife. That would make her the cousin. No, 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 the... The second cousin of our son. I suppose it's not too closely related. But Zeus also descends from exclusively those two. Like, uh, it's a bit of a mess. Let's see if we'll at least... If she'll at least marry Rhino. No, political concerns. Right, understandable. Uh, what if we invite her to court? She'll say no. False religion. Opinion of me is very, very low. We could try and bribe her, I guess. I think Athena would be a very cool god to get to marry our next sort of son, you know? Let's try and do that one. If not, I'm sure we can find some other pretty pretty relevant Greek gods. Uh, this is our second son. Oh, well, what's this? We're going to train him in... Oh, God, I wanted Marshall, but he's timid. Magic it is. Sure, why not? Uh, you will get my magical knowledge. So, one method we could retire this character is taking the business focus, getting stressed or depressed, and then committing suicide. I wanted to keep this guy around, you know... He's done a lot, despite the fact that he is a, an inbred lunatic. He's, he is he single-handedly brought about the first um, genetically sort of perfect uh, non-inbred, I should say. Let, let's put it that way. Non-inbred uh, heir into our family. So it seems appropriate that he would sort of be honoured in his own sort of weird way. He'd sound like the, the creepy one. We would sort of want to ship off to an island and not see again. Um... The application decision, unfortunately, is broken. I thought it was because he's a lunatic. It's just broken. It's because it should at least show up in this menu and at least give us reasons why we can or cannot. Again, I have a feeling that's because the mods are um, not cooperating with one another. That's not much of a surprise. What is happening here? Duke Albors the Cruel of House Seljuk, Persian. You know what? Your fawn cedar. Welcome aboard. Let's give him. Uh, let's give him this land. He should have uh, Usima. There you go. You're welcome. That's one option we could take is the suicide option. Again, I don't want to do that because it seems a bit of a waste of this kind of cool character we've got. Um, the application is definitely where I'd like to like to head. Now, we've also got to rig this election because that's really what's screwing us here. We could flip over to primogeniture again, uh, or at least we could try it. All we need is high crown authority or, I believe, late feudal administration. Where is that? Late feudal administration. We need... Uh, no tribal vassals. Ah, shit. Okay, ignore that then. We'll go for the crown authority. Why don't we buy some favours? Because, unfortunately, because of those two empty council positions, we are going to have to buy favours. We're going to have to take out some loans as well, or at least find a way to get some gold. Lower Imperial Decadence. Done. Now 7.2. Hey, we load that by a decent amount there. Sweet. Right, let's go ahead and uh, focus on some gold for a while. We're taking the business focus, so this seems the most appropriate thing to do. Flip over to Primogeniture. That's the best way to do that. Then all we've got to do is focus on abdicating or getting rid of this character some way. And we're good. We've got the perfect ruler. Well, I think we're long overdue for a haircut. Again, I'm trying to save this final video for the most important aspects of gameplay. Holy shit, look at that beard. Sold. And I feel like this is definitely something I've neglected and I apologize for that. You know, I'm, I'm only human. I try and do as much as I can. But something as important as this definitely deserves a place in the final episode i like the braid it kind of shows some perhaps uh some some sensitive side i imagine his wife did it for him or something along those lines now we do have an option of a couple of braids here oh uh, this one's good because you know what it's got the braid it shows that he has uh the ability to take care of himself because he is concerned about how his hair looks clearly because it's in a braid maybe his wife did it for him again i learned that sensitive side but it's also tidied up at the back and that shows that he definitely also a man of business. That is, in my opinion, an infinite improvement already. He will be remembered for his his beard beard and his hair beard. Werewolf, vampire, something, suspected monster. I mean, isn't everybody in this empire at this stage? Is there anybody left who's not a damn monster? Speaking of which, somebody... Wait, was that not a marshal? Bokvard, are you a... Are you a werewolf too? Maybe he was bitten. Or maybe... Maybe there are vampires. Oh, Okay. Uh, your Marshal Bokvard Aesir has put forward a plan for experimentation with new military tech. Guess what? Uh, we haven't got enough gold for it, so sorry, Bokvard. We he could have made us a tank. 
He could have made us some screaming arrows. I guess we'll never know because I spent all my gold on a holding slot, was it? To be fair, that is, that is pretty good. I don't know why I'm making that like it's a bad thing. Oh my god, we have so much stuff to build. Um, again, I'm just worried about the actual main capital. Everything else can... It doesn't matter. We'll put that on auto build. And uh, that will sort itself out eventually. What we want to focus on is getting this capital completely done. Seeing what... You know, seeing the potential of this empire. How's our air doing? We do want to marry him off. We do need some... Oh, that's right. We were saving up for the gold to be able to buy a wife. Oh, shit. Our son has this haircut as well. Just not a less impressive beard. Um, it is, you know, werewolf-like in tradition that the, the emperor has the biggest beard. And anything larger offends him. Our enemies will tremble before him. Duke Abel Seljuk, the cruel. Of course. Thank you. Of Finland. Seljuk's in Finland. Um, the Seljuk's have flipped over to the Turkish Empire, of all things. Is that something that's supposed to happen? Oh my god, he's also a werewolf. Everywhere's a goddamn werewolf. Cultures? That's why they're no longer called Seljuk. Because that's a co that's a, like, it's a, a name based on... Uh, so, so certain cultures have... The empires are named after the titles. That's what I'm trying to say, but I'm an idiot. Um, so Seljuk would be named Seljuk normally, but because he's lichen culture, he's no longer. Uh, that's no longer the case. How many places are actually owned by a lichen at this stage? Is my real question because we seem to be more or less all over the place. We've got lichens in the HRE. A lot of lichens actually. Look at this. Um, obviously, lichens now in uh, in those sort of main Constantinople, I suppose Istanbul or Nicomedia area. Of the Turkish Empire. Whoa, that's crazy. I can't believe that. Look, all around sort of uh, this area, which I'm sure is somewhere. Where is that in real life? Like, South Russia, Kyrgyzstan? I'm not sure. For a man who was head of the War Chiefs, you think he'd die a bit more manly. Ah, ah. Okay. Well, it worked just as I thought, and we are not the War Chief. Um, again, it's because I think we need to have a... Uh, if we look at the rank up, we need a Holy Order title, so that's not really much of a surprise. We could swap societies at this stage and go for, like, the Children of Muspel, the Great Trager League. I don't think that's necessary. I would like to join the Hermetic Society, but unfortunately, because of the amount of mods, the Hermetic Society is no longer available to her to uh, reform pagans. I could change that, but there is a surprising amount of work to actually fix that. Unfortunately, it's not just cases showing it. You have to also alter some of the events, too. Um, Prince I of Venice, a horse caretaker... That suits him, I feel, through and through. I'm going to be thorough and make others count on you. Diligent. Shit. If only we could have got that with Rhino the first. I like that they turn 16 and then suddenly their eyes glow. That's that's pretty nice. Show more ambition. Oh shit, he's going out to be a really good character. Look at this. Patient, diligent, erudite, ambitious. He might actually also turn out to be a master mage. And if we could flip to primogeniture too, it would save me uh, pissing everyone off. That's the other thing we were saving up for. I it's all coming back to me now. So council. We've already got loyalists. The question is, will they stick by me? She probably won't because she's our concubine and doesn't want our first wife's children to inherit, I would imagine. Um, first things first, let's buy favors off of the people who aren't already loyalists, just in case. Um, no, I don't care what my wife thinks. I want to keep this person as my steward. Now, how much money do we need to buy a favor from you? 680 gold? Bogvard, I know you're a god and everything, but Jesus, that's a... Uh... Kingdom of the North Sea is now considered part of the De Jure Empire. Kingdom of the North Sea? Is that is that Norway? What is that? Weird. Okay. Our enemies will tremble before him. Yet another werewolf. Awesome. We've still got a lot of religious problems in this empire, haven't we? You know what? It's not as bad as I thought. Fawn Cedar, mostly. Some Old Norse, some Catholic. But you know what? We've done pretty well on, on the religious front. Um, we're still proselytizing too, so we'll just... Uh... Give it some time there. Thulka Rhino the First has declared great Venetian holy war for France. Frey is with us. What are you thinking? Okay. Um, do we want to join that? Probably. I mean, we should probably at least, as a show of support, join our grandfather's war, you know? Excellent. Thank you. Um, I don't really want to take France. But seriously, you declared a great holy war for one, two... Three, four, five provinces, six provinces. You madman. Do you know the cooldown on that? What a fool. Okay, Sicily's looking a bit strange. They've sort of grabbed up some really weird land. The HRE is not what it used to be, let's put it that way. And the Ockerton Empire has actually expanded a huge amount. I didn't realize they just conquered all of this as well. Very impressive. Emperor Fortuna Monkey Face. 
What? Why is he called that? Ugly? Syphilitic? Lunatic? <laughs> Monkey face. I've never seen... Oh, and of course he's Lycan as well. What a shocker. Brilliant. 